Welcome back to Golden Roll Radio. Hope you guys are doing well this week. I'm going to start this show with a really funny story about a client who called me about a topic that I probably would have never thought a client would call me about. And so she's 75, 77. She was in the process of doing a distribution. So I was helping her with that, distributing from her precious metals IRA. So she calls me a couple of days after we already did done everything. And I'm like, why is she calling? You know, I pick up the phone and she's saying, Robert, I'm calling you because something's wrong with my cell phone and I don't know what it's doing. And what it was doing is she had obviously hit on a text message like the transcribe button, but it was at the same time that the trust company had called her. So she was sharing her personal information with the trust company, but it was transcribing in a text on her cell phone to her daughter. And she may be a little bit concerned about that because it had <laughs> yeah. account number, Where husband's birthday, from? you know, and it yeah. all transcribed on this text message. And, and so she felt comfortable enough to just call me and say, I know you probably can tell me is something going on here. And after she explained it, I obviously knew what it was because I'm 40 years old. I'm not 77. I've grown up with a smartphone almost. Barely a millennial. Barely. So I figured I would share that because you've got this relationship. They've been doing business with us for 10 or 15, probably 20 years. And she felt comfortable to call us on a random topic because the relationship was there. And I added some value to fixing that and relieving her concern. And our topics can go everywhere. I mean, we can have conversation, Tori. You know this. I'm glad she didn't call me on a tech issue at the phone, but you're right. The conversation can go anywhere. It does. I mean, we've had people call us and talk to us about a business thing that they're trying to make a business decision and it matters to them. And because of the relationship they have with this company, they feel comfortable talking with us. So you guys listening to the show regularly, you hear us talk about technicals on gold, silver, platinum, palladium, ratios, dollar, stock market, all that. That is just zooming way in from the conversations they were having. It's zooming into what the market's doing. But I want the listeners to hear us when we say we do add value to a relationship with us, whether it's the metals. Sure, we can talk all day long about that. But there's other things that real estate, businesses, other investments that we can talk to those ideas. I helped a lady fill out an annuity paperwork that she was trying to get out of her annuity. She didn't have a penalty. She wanted to use the money for something else because she's moving across the country. She needed some cash. She'd done well in the annuity and she didn't have any idea how to read the annuity form. And so it's not normal course of business, but we can help people in various ways rather than just zooming way in as we do on the show every week. And so we'll jump to the market stuff. But Well, no, that's, that's a great point. I mean, in, in summary, I think too, what you're saying, it doesn't even have to do with portfolio. We do a lot of portfolio planning. I mean, obviously with McIlvaney Wealth Management, that's more the paper side of things, right? Vaulted, more of sort of a banking alternative and savings alternative. But the portfolio planning We're happy to run through that with you and just take your unique situation and portfolio and break it down and offer one humble opinion on one way to approach your overall strategy in this economic landscape or environment or any economic landscape or environment. So I appreciate you bringing that up because we do value our relationships. I've got some similar that whether it's 80 year old widows or 20 something year old trying to figure out for the first time how to plan going ahead (laughs) from here. Uh, It's uh, not only crazy times, but we're honored to be helping that way. So Yeah, and we talk a lot about the metals on this show because this is straightforward, a metal show. But there's a theory that all things connect, and I think they do. And because there's so much going on in the world now, and everything's so interconnected, You talk about gold, well, you've got to talk about the dollar. You've got to talk about the stock market. You've got to talk about what's happening in Europe. You've got to talk about whatever China's doing, buying gold, like David McIlvaney mentioned this week on McIlvaney Commentary. Yeah, that's a must-listen You've got to talk. That is a must-listen. That was a good show. Talks a little bit about the family and, and the business and how that came to be at the front of the show. Go listen to the commentary this week if you haven't already. But all these things interconnect, and the point is that we are so zoomed in on this show usually of what gold's doing week to week, silver, whatever, but all these things connect and we can talk about things in a much broader sense. And I think there's value in a relationship with us. So we invite you to call, engage with us. We're happy to talk to you. 
Well, let's jump into the medals. Let's do. And as David says, all roads lead to gold. You know, as he, <laughs> this is a, an economic genius of a mind and he <laughs> yes, can he tie is. everything together. So you're right. This show focuses on it, but it really does spread out and, and relate to everything else. Now, a lot of what I'm getting asked, and I don't know about you, we are far less price conscious, even though it doesn't come across that way in the show. We really are on a day-to-day basis less price conscious than we are value aware. And yet people want to know what's going on price-wise right now. So we're in a huge range, both in gold and in silver. Miles has sort of beaten us up here the last couple of weeks. So without further ado, let's talk about gold being 1680 to the low side, roughly up to roughly 1820. Think of that as like the story of a building, the floor and the ceiling, and that ball is bouncing in that floor. And right now we're right in the middle of the room on gold. We don't know. Is it up from here, down from here? We're in the middle of that range, real similar with silver, 1840 down to the low side, $20.80 to the upside. Again, these are rough ranges. But anytime we're in between there, this is still a really good opportunity. We love the story of the building that we're on good chance to lower your cost average. In our opinion, you should be buying all the time. And you can't have a hedge work effectively unless you're buying it when it's at a discount. That's when it's the best opportunity to be picking it up because a lot of people waited too long until that hedge had already done what it's supposed to do and it had only to come down from there. So those are the ranges. But I'll tell you, this week, gold unchanged, silver down 6%. Again, and what's happened? The ratios bounced back up to 91 to 1, screaming even more. Silver is undervalued. So anything to add there chart-wise? Yeah, silver, recession, silver, recession. I mean, (laughs) kind of hand in hand a little bit. A lot of the previous decline to where we are with the price of silver at 19 bucks. I think a lot of that was the market forward thinking that we were going into recession and because that's what yes. markets do, right? So And that's what the metals do predictively. Yeah, right. So that's already happened with the market forward thinking. Now you're having a lot of the news headlines talking about recession and obviously if you're paying attention at all, <laughs> Europe is having big problems. And because Europe's having problems, the euro has been coming back down. It's now gone below parity with euro dollar exchange. And so that's pushed the dollar index to a slightly higher high, maybe intraday, maybe not. Um, But that's also put the downward pressure again, kind of on the metals again in this very short term. I think with silver down and while gold's pretty much flat, it's hinting the recession, silver, recession, silver. So it's tough to know because like what you're saying, Tori, is we're range bound. We're not really in a clear trend except range bound trend. (laughs) And so it can break either way. If in the short term we were to break a little lower, I think that is probably going to be one of the last opportunities to be buying metals a little bit lower than where it is. And when I say a little bit, I don't think we're going very much lower. If we were to break 1680 on gold, there is plenty of congestion way back in the charts in the 16 to 1650 range. When gold's done stuff like that, it's usually been so ephemeral, like just happens really quickly and you barely even get a chance to act on it. may not even be awake for it. may not be awake, might happen in Asia the market or the European market. And so if that happens, maybe it does, that I think could be the last push down before you really head higher. I think the next major move on gold, major move is up. I think that's evident with what it's done on the basing pattern for the last, what, year and a half? It's a great summary. You know, so that's possible. A little bit lower, like some last gasp move before it just bounces and comes back up. That's in the short term. It may not do that. That's the problem is like, we don't know. We're range bound. It may not have another move below 1680 for gold and silver, wherever volatility tends to drive it down, but you may not get that. And so at these current levels, while you're range bound, if we were to not see that last move down before you had the next big move up with gold, this may be where you're going to look and say, I wish I'd have bought it there. So, oh, yeah. you know, two Especially scenarios, with the ratio. Right. Two right, scenarios. So- I don't know what's going to happen because you're range bound, but you don't want to wait too long because, again, the next major move in gold is higher. It's a good point because I just don't see the dollar lasting up here. Got other currencies that are struggling, 
more than the U.S. dollar. It's relative, and David and Kevin talked about that this week. But that dollar index at 109 is super strong. We've talked about it being a 20-plus year high. And I don't see how that can remain the case, especially as you're entering a recession. But it's still showing that the whole world still flees into the U.S. dollar first. But with that, there's a few other headwinds. You talked about recession with silver and with the metals really in general, but you also talked about that U.S. dollar index, which we just alluded to. But geopolitically, yeah, we still have the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. But other than that, there's general stability in the geopolitical scene, not driving gold higher. Inflation is decreasing is another one. So as inflation numbers have started to improve in the United States, even though they're worsening in Europe, that's improving in the United States. We measure our gold ounce in U.S. dollars. And so as a result, it's up in the yen and pound and the mark and everything else, but it's down in the dollar. Our Federal Reserve is tapering. That's another headwind for gold. If they were quantitative easing and making money easy to come by again and flooding the market, gold would be going up. You've had a recent equity market reversal. So we saw these big pullbacks and now they've reversed and made up 50%. Well, I'll stop you. I don't think it's a reversal on the major trend. Agreed. That you're talking about the short-term little reversal from yeah. a total collapse yeah. because it seems to have failed to go higher. And so just to clarify. That's right. Yeah. We're not calling a new bull market. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. In Definitely not in a bull market That's in equities. Right. Definitely not. But that's six reasons right there why the metals prices are down. So I hope that helps you as a listener to think about why are gold and silver doing what they're doing. Keep in mind, they have done what they're supposed to do. Silver's at $19 an ounce. Gold's at $17.50. Two years ago, you know, you have to go back and look at the fact that we were $12 on silver and $14.50 on gold. They have found a new home. They've reestablished. Even in this headwind type of environment, their prices are stable, they're strong here, and they're waiting to resume new climbs. I'd agree. Absolutely. You know, we've got to touch on the dollar. You mentioned Europe having issues. If you look at the last couple of weeks of the dollar index and the up day, up day, up day, up day, that's the market forward seeing the news that just kind of broke in Europe. I think actually the larger rise in the dollar from like, what, 90 all the way up to 108, 109, where we are. That's a huge move for a currency. I think that's the market, just the same as the market's forward thinking on silver being affected by recession. I think that's the market forward seeing Europe having issues, the euro weakening, the dollar strengthening. I think that all correlates in my mind, at least. But the dollar, it's keeping that downward pressure on the price of gold and silver in dollars. And the European news is now news. So the market is now looking at what's the next forward thinking thing. Obviously, this Friday, we've got Jackson Hole with the Fed. That'll affect some things. Yeah, pay attention to that Friday. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, what's coming down the pike in the next few months that the market is forward thinking? And and I think that's the biggest question because you've already seen some of these trims play out with the market forward thinking on silver recession, dollar being going up because of your Euro, the european situation so we'll see we'll, we're going to try to identify this next trend as it begins rather than talk about it you know after the fact we want to identify where are we going to break out one direction or another especially with the metals prices yeah you're definitely getting closer to that point where the federal reserve pivots and by pivot we mean they have to start making money easy again or they have to stop raising interest rates. So we're raising interest rates. Europe's still at 0%. China's cutting rates, right? And so, you know, the dollar index is relative to other currencies. So keep that in mind. But in the meantime, China, yeah, they may be cutting rates, but like you alluded to, 80 tons of gold bought last month in China, that's 2.8 million ounces in a month. So they're forward thinking. What are they forward thinking? Why would they be doing that on such a grand scale if they weren't forward thinking pessimistically for a global economy, because yes, inflation's global, but so is recession. Both of those are global phenomenons that are going on right now. In the US, 29.6% year over year reduction in housing prices. And then half of US companies plan on cutting jobs. So we haven't even seen the full recessionary impact yet in our own economy, and yet neither has the rest of the world. So get ready for that. Student loan forgiveness, $3 billion more to Ukraine, our own domestic climate change spending, 
they're not showing any restraint from a government spending standpoint. <laughs> Definitely and not. so that has to ultimately result in an increase in the money supply and the Federal Reserve making it affordable for the government to do that. They can't just keep raising rates. How many ounces did you say that Chinese thing equated to? 2.8 million? 2.8 million ounces. Yeah. So 80 tons is, what, 35,000 ounces. Okay. So that works out to about, I think, $4.9 billion. We get jaded to these billion, million, trillion things, but gold's a pretty small market comparatively to stocks, definitely compared to bonds or currencies. If you want to cause a wake in the market, buy $5 billion worth of gold. <laughs> I yeah, mean, that'll put a floor in it. Yeah. It's not like they're just printing tons of gold. It's definitely a thinner market that can have a ripple effect throughout the market from a purchase like that. They didn't acquire any of that from us, by the way, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have those connections. Well, what else, Dory? Does that wrap it up? I think that wraps it up. Again, I'd point you to the McIlvaney Weekly Commentary this week. It's a good market recap. And as Robert started the show, it's a pleasure to work with you, pleasure to be a resource and opinion for you. Honestly, Colin, it's a free one. Some people don't have someone to talk about financial things. And even if you are in a happy marriage, however long you've been married, you know, maybe your spouse doesn't actually want to listen to you anymore, you know, about, <laughs> about certain You topics. need a shoulder. <laughs> you know, so like it could be that you're single. It could be that you're married. You've got five brothers and sisters you can talk to about. But we find these people who do find value in working with us, even if it doesn't result in them doing business with us. So we encourage you to build a relationship with us on whatever front that means. Yeah, call us. Our number is 800-525-9556. You can also garner a lot of information, obviously, on the website, McIlvaney.com. Twitter as well at ICA Gold and Facebook at McIlvaney Financial. And we look forward to working with you, carrying on the conversation, and coming back next week to give you the most recent update. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. 